Today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash podcast and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It's that easy. Go to audibletrial.com slash podcast and grab a free book. Let's get to the podcast. We're going to expand our weekly video segment to take you into the back shelves of your local video store. Back where it says horror videos and where kids are devouring some awful films that we call the video nasties. Are you freebasing inquiring minds want to know? I have to break free from this culture of mechanical reproductions and the thick incrustations dying on the surface. What the prime time gets. Pain, I can assure you, will be exquisite. As for our deaths, come with me and be immortal. We have such sights to show you. We've got to return some video. Hello, horror hounds, and welcome to the It Slays podcast. I'm your humble host, Rowan. It's Exilia. And this is a rotten break in a stocking mic. And we are back. It is our second of three episodes for Pride Month. Hopefully, your Pride Month's going well. You're protesting the shit out of everything. Fuck the system. Amen. It should be called Wrath Month. Wrath Month. Bring the wrath. I figure let's get into the question for this episode. I want to know what are some... LGBTQ plus movies and TV that you'd recommend to watch over the course of the month or all year. All right. After that quick edit job, I'll go first. (laughs) Uh, I would suggest uh, to me kind of it's, you know, the same heavy hitters that I'd have to watch. Like you have to watch Hedwig at some time, Rocky Horror, Shock Treatment. I think other than that, I don't have any like regular things. Surprisingly enough, uh, I mean, other than like RuPaul and stuff, I don't really have any TV mentions. I think I do, but I'm going to let Exilia drop that one in. Uh, Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I th- I think that's a good enough good enough list. I mean, we have it coming up next episode. Like the the film we're doing next episode is probably my go to, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, let's go to Exilia. I feel like this is like such a broad question, like such a all like overarching question that in in like Mike said, it's like very simple. But you're like, uh, um, for TV, I have no idea what you were gonna say, but I would say Glow. Oh yeah, Glow's a great one. What one were you gonna say? Well, I was gonna I was gonna say, like, if you're talking about representation, like we're watching Modern Family right now. Yeah. And I think like that does like such a great job of a representation of a gay couple that isn't like too it is outrageous, but it's not like offensive. It's pretty but okay, so we've been watching Modern Family from like the first episode, there are some like problematic things in this series in general. I mean, it is a like main, very mainstream, mainstream. network television show. But yeah. I think it's been yeah. really interesting since we've watched it because like we watch it from season one. We're on like almost season seven now, and I think it's interesting because you can tell as the seasons go by that they like get more and more correct yeah. in things. Where at first it was just kind of like. Oh, we can say whatever. And then you can see them getting, you know, a little more woke as it goes on. We're in the middle of season six, I think. We're at the end of season six. And things have definitely, have definitely changed. And they use things more as like a commentary. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's like, you know, some sort of hard hitting commentary, but they do try to, I think there's more of an effort 
to do that now than there was in like especially like the first couple seasons yeah a hundred percent in terms of a movie i was thinking of it today because actually one of the actors in this film is in it but i'm a cheerleader yeah one of my faves Ugh. it's so great i love that movie. why can't it be a horror movie yeah really it, it kind is kind of, of a is. horror movie. It's about like like conversion therapy. <laughs> but back before everybody was talking about it. Before it was like yeah, the that's hot right. topic on everybody's lips. I remember that's like one of the ones that I saw when I was like a young teenager on television. I, I saw it with you the first time. Yeah, other than that, I really am like drawing blanks. Well, now we're going to throw it over to Mike. <laughs> it's Mike's turn now. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean... We're obviously going to have to say Closet Monster is there. Well, yeah. I, yeah, I can't believe I didn't say that, but I, know, I thought that was just like a given. Ever. I mean, of course, I've talked about Pose like 700 times over the last two years because it's like my favorite TV show. I period. still have to watch that. Um, It's brilliant. Uh, first of all, soundtrack to die for. So that alone. Moonlight, obviously we love. Carol is one of my favorite movies ever. I do love a good like old school lesbian on the road movie i don't know why <laughs> they're like my favorite <laughs> um paris is burning of course i'm gonna say i'm gonna call the talented mr ripley one too because even though it's like not as overt or maybe it is i don't really know depends on how you sort of like look at it um laurence anyways Xavier Dolan, Canadian, every movie by him. I would recommend any of those. There's just too many. There's like hundreds and hundreds. I can't believe I forgot Moonlight and Closet. I know. I thought those were like givens. You know what I mean? (laughs) I feel they are givens. If you don't know about those, get out of here. All right, I think you guys answered (laughs) it sufficiently. Why don't we uh, introduce the film we are doing this evening? And Mike, I want to give you that pleasure. Oh, and what a pleasure it is. (laughs) It's my absolute pleasure. It is Peter Jackson's 1994 Heavenly Creatures. Yes, I said Peter Jackson, as in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> so I want to know why uh, why you pick this as your pick for Prime Month. Um, because there's simultaneously not enough and too much to pick. And it just always sticks in my mind as a movie that I love and is very interesting. And there's a lot going on in it. And of course, the overt lesbian text. You can't go wrong. Murder, imagination, madness lesbianism, conspiracies, beautiful New Zealand scenery, brilliant actors. What more is there to like? I can just keep ticking them, ticking off the reasons for choosing this for an hour. Well, let's get into the uh, trailer and then we'll come back with the bio and uh, we'll crack, crack this film open because Exilia is shaking with anticipation. So let's get into the trailer. They were two young girls. Living in a world of imagination. I'm going to the fourth world. It's an absolute paradise of music, art, and pure enjoyment. What they had was friendship. What a disgrace you are! Your mother is rather a miserable woman. What they needed was freedom. Do you like your mother? No. What they shared was a secret. Your daughter's in behaving in a rather disturbed manner. What's she done? I think I'm going crazy. I'm sure it's perfectly innocent. The crime that shocked the nation. People die every day. Only the best people fight against all obstacles in pursuit of happiness. Paul thought it up. Aren't you clever? We're not going to be separated. (laughs) I hate you! She's uncontrollable. Based on a true story. It's all frightfully romantic. Heavenly Creatures. So that was the trailer. Uh, Let's get to the IMDb bio. Two teenage girls share a unique bond. Their parents, concerned that the friendship is too intense, separate them and the girls take revenge. Yeah. I mean, that's (laughs) simplistic. (laughs) So let's start off, as always, with is this our first time experiencing this film? What was your first time with this film, Uh, Exilia? 
this was the first time I had ever heard of this movie. Okay. What was my experience with it? No, no, I don't want to know all of it. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, well, this was the first time. (laughs) And this was also my first time. I had never heard of this movie, Mm -mm. which is actually kind of surprising because I love this era of Peter Jackson. So, yeah. Yeah, it's like I call it the ascent of Peter. Yeah. Peter Rising, if you will. Get it? Uh, How about you, Mike? (laughs) Oh, my God. I saw this movie for the first time randomly on TV late one night when I was like a teenager. And I had no idea who any of the people were or I'd never heard of it before. Actually, I think it was. Yeah, I I feel like nobody was even talking about it at that point because I don't think he was still super famous. But um, I just remember watching it. And like, again, when I was like a teenager, my friggin bread and butter was for whatever reason, like, lesbian coming of age, <laughs> or lesbians on the run, or whatever. And so, of course, I watched it and just fell in love with it. And it's always been one of my, like, kind of on a pedestal films, if you will. And then, of course, you know, it, I love Kate Winslet so much, so. Well, saying that, let's, uh, I only have a few of, uh, you know, who's in it, all that kind of stuff. So Mike already brought up that it's directed by a maybe known director, Peter Jackson. Uh, you know, this indie guy that uh, some people know of. Yeah, some hack. <laughs> some hack. Yeah, I feel like it's kind of, you know, it's ridiculous when you're like, oh, these are the films that he's directed because... I feel like everyone knows them. Obviously, most famous for directing Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Uh, He also directed the remake of King Kong that, side note, Exilia used to love. (laughs) The beauty killed the beast. The beauty killed the beast. Also uh, directed District 9. And then also, like, some very awesome cult horror stuff. Yes. Bad Taste. uh, Meet the Feebles. Brain Dead, The Frighteners. Brain Dead is literally one of the greatest movies that has ever been committed to film. I'm just throwing that out there. We, at some point, we uh, there is no way we're not oh, reviewing yeah. Brain Dead. Absolutely not. It's. I don't think Exilia's ever seen any of the old Peter Jackson stuff. I've literally only seen one Lord of the Rings, let alone like any of his old movies. I'm sorry. <laughs> this movie made me contrary. Mike, me and Mike are going to battle it out. Oh. But I don't, I'm not like, I'm not a Lord of the Rings person, unfortunately. Even though Rowan was named after Rowan Berry's mentioned in the book. The beef is on. So I'll be honest, I got lazy with it. I didn't IMDB the actresses and actors. I did it on Wikipedia, so I was like, if I can't click on your name, I'm not going to talk about you. Uh, that's legit. That actually should be your new um, bar by which you judge every um, actor and director and remember so we'll start with uh melanie linsky uh who plays pauline and i was looking at her creds and highly impressive she's in a ton of movies yeah Uh, first of all one of the greatest comedies of the late 90s early 2000s and i know you're gonna say it so i'll let you do your thing no please say it a detroit rock Rock city City. oh yeah (laughs) the frighteners Detroit Rock City, but I'm a cheerleader. Coyote Ugly. Uh, she was in that XX anthology that came out a couple years ago of all the uh, like female directors that did like horror shorts. And then I also like I've never seen either of these shows, but she apparently she was like the star of Two and a Half Men. Forever. Yeah, I think she was in it for I a bunch of that. years. And she's also in Castle Rock. I also didn't know that. But that's a show I want to watch. The first time I ever saw her was actually my mom was obsessed with Ever After with her and Drew Barrymore. Oh, wow. And that was the first time I ever saw her. Oh, wow. I never saw Ever After. I feel like there's a very specific like, <laughs> like subset of women and girls of that era of all different ages that were like obsessed with that for 10 years. I feel like Ever yes. After was like a lot of people's like older sister's favorite movie and stuff. <laughs> it's true. Uh, next up, I have written down uh, indie actress darling uh, Kate Winslet. Like I said, a lot of unknown people just hanging around. Yeah, it was just a, a whole like smorgasbord of hex. <laughs> She plays uh, Juliet. Do you want to? Do you want to rain off? I know you know off the top of your head 
movies Kate Winslet's been in. Like, literally, where do you start? Literally, like, I don't even... Like, Kate Winslet's vast, storied, sickening acting career. Where do you start? (laughs) I mean, I feel like probably most important is Titanic. I hate that movie so much that I literally pushed it out of my mind that she was ever even in it. I actually pushed it out of my mind that it even existed. I think that was really what, like, blew her up. Oh, it was. Absolutely. My mom bought me at Claire's a Heart of the Ocean necklace. Oh. I was in grade three, okay? Like, it was a hit. I saw in the drive-in with my grandmother. It's adorable that you saw that with your grandma. <laughs> I saw Titanic three times in the theater. I don't think I've ever seen it since the first time. I don't. I don't, I don't even, I don't even it like again. it. It was like, <laughs> literally, I was just young and like, People would go, and then they'd be like, oh, you're gonna come see Titanic, and then I just saw it three times. When I was a kid before, like, way before the movie came out, when I was, like, five and six, I was weirdly obsessed with the Titanic, like, the actual ship, and then that movie came out, and then I stopped liking it. (laughs) Um, my parents did not own any movies on VHS because they never watched movies like unlike me you know I just from the time I was able to stand up I was like movies 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 I just want to watch movies all the time I want to own them and watch them over and over again I want to watch them on TV whenever they're on the one VHS that they ever bought that I can remember was the Titanic Titanic. VHS and I don't think they ever even watched it I was like why did you even buy I think they just bought it because everybody else bought it just like they never bought uh like CDs, but they bought the Candle in the Wind CD. <laughs> oh my god. And I was like, and again, I don't think, I think it's probably still in their basement somewhere wrapped in plastic. Like, <laughs> And by one, one VHS tape, you mean two? Because you literally, at the end of the first one, it was like, please now put in, like, the, the second, second VHS. Tape, yeah. I think that was the only, like, VHS movie my grandparents <laughs> Yes, owned. that's how I remember that it was two, two cassettes. Yeah, it was, it was a bad one. Uh, I also had written down for her uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. That's probably my favorite thing that she's in. And then I've never seen it, but I guess maybe her resurgence was like she was in all those Divergent movies that came out. Yeah. I feel like a younger audience would know her from that. Well, probably not because I don't think they made very much money. <laughs> I don't know anything about it. I don't even know if they're making the whole series anymore. I think they kind of, like, gave up on it. Yeah, and which is interesting, because I've never seen the movie, and I've never read the book, but I remember how popular the book was. Like, everybody bought it. I just feel like the the adaptation came at the end of that cycle of, like, teen thrillers, dystopian thrillers, like, being turned into movies. Even though it had been out and very popular for years, I feel like... You know, it was so epic that they were like, took a long time to make it. But unfortunately, it came out when that boom was kind of like deflating. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. We were tired of all the Team Edwards and the Katnesses. That can only go on for so long. Well, until they... Team Edward. I wouldn't call Twilight a dystopian. You might get it in the... I mean, the fact that it exists means we live in a dystopian world, so there's that. No, the fact that there's a new one coming out means it's a dystopian world. I don't know. I feel like there's more than just that that means we're living in a dystopian world, <laughs> this, but okay. <laughs> this, is, this is also true. I also just want to throw out one of my favorite Kate Winslet movies that nobody ever talks about, and it's amazing and never gets any fucking credit, is Quills. I've never saying, seen that. Oh my god, it. it's about the Marquis de Sade, so, and it has Kate Winslet in it. Kate Winslet and Jeffrey Rush. It's uh, actually superb. Now, I say that I haven't seen it in probably <laughs> longer, more of my life than I... <laughs> Head, so you know. In- oh, I thought you were gonna say, "Oh, I haven't seen it." <laughs> no, 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 no. In, in a very long time. Like, I- okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the the last few people I had written down were uh, Sarah Pierce and she- okay. How do you say the mom's name? It's like Honora. Honora, isn't it? Is it? I didn't know how you like pronounced it, but uh, the mother, mur- Wh- the victim, one? the oh, murder okay. victim. She's only her only real credits were like she's in the Hobbit movies 
And she's in the Mortal Engine movies. Another teen dystopian. Mortal Engine? Is it Mortal Instruments? Is it Instruments? Or I don't I know. think there's also a movie called Mortal Engine. I don't even know anymore. It's I don't <laughs> kind know. of ridiculous. I think, <laughs> I think it's Mortal Engine because I, okay. I wrote it down while I was reading it. But she did have a Wikipedia page, apparently. Yeah, so. she was important enough to have a Wikipedia page. Well, she played the murder victim. She would kind of have to have. <laughs> <laughs> and the last person I had was uh, Clive Neer who plays Henry Hume. He plays the father. And he was in The English Patient. And apparently he's like a huge BBC actor because he's played Sherlock Holmes 75 times (laughs) on like BBC radio teleplays. So apparently he's like famous over there for that. I know we got some UK listeners, so... We do our research. Do we, though? Because it kind of sounds like we <laughs> it don't. It came from Wikipedia. <laughs> we, we, we read, we read <laughs> Wikipedia. We do the bare minimum. We do the bare minimum. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's get into the review. I'm tired of seeing Exilia jumping and shaking and joy. Let's start it off. Favorite scenes. Let's go to Mike first. Um, my favorite scene is probably just that kind of, like, bit at the beginning when, after she gets to school, when, you know, the, like, fancy car is pulling up. And essentially the whole cluster of scenes of Juliet entering the classroom and then, like, over the next, you know, few class scenes, her, you know, being a know-it-all, like, disruptive little shit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I just I love that so much I found it because like it was so captivating and like I found that um not just like Kate Winslet herself could even though like she's wonderful but it really first of all it was kind of magical and like slightly fantastical but like it did a really amazing job of like establishing her as having this like charisma and like a quality even though she's kind of obnoxious because you know she's obviously very smart and precocious and doesn't mind telling teachers that (laughs) literally that they're wrong but like you know she's also like kind of like oh you know she's got this magnetism to her i found and again again, it's probably mostly because of kate winslet because she's so spectacular but i just love that whole cluster of scenes at the beginning i just there's something about it exilia how about you Well, I really had to rack my brain through all of the scenes and decide what my favorite one was. <laughs> um, my favorite scene was when they were in the bathtub, like head on, like one end and head on the other, and this the camera pans. <laughs> pants and Kate Winslet and she's in the bathtub and she looks really sad and it looks like from it's from Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like at the end when she's in the water. She's she's about to drown. <laughs> so that was my favorite scene. Oh my my favorite scene was the one that looked like Kate Winslow was about to drown. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> my favorite scene is the one that looked like it's from another movie. <laughs> my favorite scene, kind of like Mike, I think it's like a cluster of scenes. I really like the fantastical stuff like where they go into the imaginary world yeah i like the flowers there oh yeah (laughs) beautiful flowers beautiful beautiful flowers no i love like the you know the clay population of like this castle in the city i love the look of it it's like super 90s and all the camera work in those scenes like uh, like i said earlier like i love this era peter jackson and that's like just his signature camera angles and stuff are just vigorously at work in those scenes so it just brings me back to like brain dead and bad taste and like i just i loved it and they were also like they just were it wasn't that they were even pleasant to look at like it was almost like terrifying like because it looks so so crude yeah yeah and i just i loved it and it was just bizarre and that's definitely up my alley so that those were my favorite collection of scenes in the film spoiler alert (laughs) spoiler alert i'm gonna sound really negative on on this episode and i know mike's gonna be like this episode but (laughs) i hated those clay people (laughs) 
I hated everything about them. It was they literally made... like what they made, and it was before they had like I know you know polished their you know world, and it's what they made them out of. So it was supposed to look unpolished and crazy. yeah, like it was an interesting concept, but yeah, it it made me hate this movie even more. <laughs> Zilla's getting right to the <laughs> right to the rating, right to the pun. Well, does she ever beat around the bush? No, she beats the bush up. <laughs> beats yeah, the no. bush up. My big thing with the film was I love I love the cinematography of it. It was probably my favorite thing about it. Man, it really looks like an early nineties movie, and I just there's something I love about that. And like you were saying, Mike, like I love I do love the classroom scenes. I did really like the setups of Juliet and Pauline. Like, I wasn't, like, all about her character, but, like, I mean, this is based on a true, like, true event, so... I didn't know that until after I watched it. Yeah, so, I mean, that's always, like, an interesting, interesting thing about it. Also, I thought it was interesting just on the fact that I probably can't list which is sad you know the amount of movies on my hands that i've seen that are are kind of like about these girl and girl relationship like a lesbian relationship building like i can't think of many movies i have personally seen so i think it's interesting because you know we talked about at the beginning of the episode, we talked about, you know, how I love Closet Monster and I love Moonlight. And I, like, I was actually thinking about that when Mike was saying he was watching, like, lesbian coming out movies. And I was like, I don't even know if I've seen one before. Oh, there's there's a lot of them. <laughs> oh, personal best? Oh, Mariel Hemingway. Don't get me started. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, like I said, I just thought it was, it, it was good to see strictly on a fact that made me think about that. Like, maybe I should seek more out because i'm like i'm not seeing this perspective and this is really one of the first ones i'm kind of seeing i think the only ever time we've really encountered it in the podcast is the perfection and i mean we can't really that wasn't a that healthy of a relationship far less healthy than this oh, not listen, this was, I, I mean I they murdered they murdered her mother because they couldn't be together i feel like maybe that's like not the most healthy dynamics either but i mean they also didn't like convince the other one that they cut their arm to cut their arm off or anything it was for a cause for a cause (laughs) (laughs) dismemberment for a cause (laughs) yeah let's i want i want to get into the meat and potatoes of these movies or this movie and i'm (laughs) I'm I'm looking at my notes peering over at exilia i'm like i'm sure these are very happy notes she wrote i want to hear some thoughts exilia me too okay so when she goes into this class and it's a french class and they tell her she has to wear they all are having those like name tag things dangling name tag necklaces and they say oh we have to have a french name in this class so you have to like give yourself a french name isn't juliet a french name yeah, but I don't think that they have probably encountered that before. Also, the teacher did look kind of like an idiot, didn't she? Because <laughs> I was like, uh. <laughs> so yeah, she gave her name Antoinette. But I was just like, that's interesting. <laughs> I also was really annoyed by how much they run around. <laughs> like they run everywhere. Exilia's really nitpicky. Like I literally <laughs> can't even fathom watching this movie and like the things that you're noting and getting irritated by are these girls that are out <laughs> playing in the woods are running around a lot. <laughs> they like, run around everywhere. I'm like, do they ever like walk? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I just thought it was all <laughs> I just I It's just like, you know, Pauline's gotta, you know. <laughs> Not not like a little lithe frame. I also thought every... Well, nobody in this movie was, like, particularly likable. No, I mean, they're both <laughs> obnoxious, like, most At all. smart and the, teenage girls are. <laughs> and, like... They're also the, both murderers. The parents are all... The parents are also kind of terrible. I like the dad. No. Pauline's dad that was, like, sitting with the fish. Yeah, he's nice. Although, no, girl, he... 
caught her essentially getting like statutory yeah. rape and then got angry at her at her <laughs> exactly and then the the other oh, man these people they give themselves way too many names juliet i'll just stick with that rather than like whatever they else they say her parents were super shitty they, she had like fucking tuberculosis and they're like okay bye all their rich people <laughs> having affairs like what do you expect I know, they were so shitty though. Also thought it was really interesting about like pathologizing like sexuality. Well, specifically like same sex relationships. And as like a girl growing up around that time, although I was like quite a bit younger, I remember my parents' attitudes about sexuality and like one time I was like playing with this. You grew up in the fifties? (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah, when it was I mean the 90s. Sorry. Oh, okay. In the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, see, that's how much things hadn't changed since then. But, <laughs> but yeah, so I had this I had this Barbie and my mom, like, bought it a wedding dress and I was playing with it. And I might have been, like, I don't know, five. And I was like, oh, I'm going to marry my Barbie. And my mom literally lost her fucking shit. I was like, never say that again. And also I had this, like, b- actually kind of, like, remind, besides be like, we're in a relationship. But I had this best, best, best friend growing up. And, like, we would, like, have sleepovers all the time. We'd always, like, sleep in the same bed. Like, go to the bathroom together, blah, blah, blah. And my dad, like, literally, like, put a kibosh to it. Because he was just, like, didn't want me to be a lesbian. And it's, like, that was just, like, my best friend. <laughs> so I was just, like, yeah, these parents are really shitty. So what I want to know, now that, you know, we know how your parents kind of treated you about- treated you about that stuff i want to know what traumatic things happened that you're so against running (laughs) they just they just ran so much (laughs) but they were trying to like run away from their oppressive authority figures they were like running around the house running into their dad (laughs) running in the forest they're so passionate they're passionate it's I guess I don't know what like, passion passion feels like in my life. I, I you know what? I'm gonna say you clearly don't. <laughs> Sorry, Rowan. I, I literally feel like I'm listening to like an 80 year old man. Just <laughs> the, we're those, gonna have a new set. Girls were just a, wouldn't stop running everywhere <laughs> and listening to their loud opera music. <laughs> I know what was with that. <laughs> that was weird. I I didn't. Mario I was... Lanzer, whoever the fuck that is. Is that even a real person? That is a real I'm... person. <laughs> you, you were not. You you didn't like recognize any of the music that they played in that movie, like just from no. popular culture. Oh my god. No. <laughs> I am like not well. well apparently, you have in no passion and no taste. I'm like cultureless. <laughs> Did you also grow um, up in a vacuum? I'm, I need to, like, we need to do some deep digging in your childhood, <laughs> I think, because um, of this movie. I was. Oh. My dad listened to heavy metal, my mom listened to Madonna. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I wasn't the taste exposed to Mario out. Lanzer. The what? taste jumped out. I mean, Madonna and metal, that's a pretty good mixture. <laughs> I was going to say, I did question, I was like, would these young girls in the 50s really be into Probably. opera? Probably. <laughs> like, weren't, like, the Beatles out and, like, things like that? These, I don't know. I don't know how yes, they do things but in But also, New think about it. She was from this, like, upper yeah. crust, you know. Yeah, exactly. They listen to fucking like Beethoven. I can't there. really say anything, because when I was a kid, I listened to Fam of the Opera, the actual opera, and Beethoven, and Mozart, so... Yeah, I didn't do any of that. Oh my god, yes. I was like, oh my god, I love classical music, and would just, like, <laughs> Me too, listen to random really... songs and think that I was, you know, this, like, Me and, me and Mike are gonna have our own side cast about classical music. Okay, you go right ahead. I just, and the girls were so just, like, I'm like, oh my god, I never want to have a teenager. Because they're so bratty. I am, like, an old person. I'm just like, oh! We're gonna have to have a new segment <laughs> that's just Exilia listing off grievances. <laughs> They were horrible, especially Kate Winslet's character. I'm just like, oh, shut up, you freaking rich, privileged girl that has TB and keeps getting sent away. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, she's got this horrific illness that everybody was dying from, and you're like, fuck you, you stupid, sick bitch. <laughs> 
I never said that. Well, that's the subtext of what you've been saying, okay? <laughs> no, she's just really like, they're just so bratty. Can't and like, she convalesce like, in the Swiss Alps in peace? Or sorry, Jamaica or wherever it was. No, it wasn't in Bermuda. Bermuda, or... yes. Yeah, Bermuda. Right. Yeah, anyways. <laughs> She was, I don't know, they were both just like, just so bratty. I don't know. Killing your parents because they won't let you be with your lover is like so 1990s. I feel like that's... (laughs) It's very TV movie of the week starring (laughs) Melissa Joan Hart and whatever blonde bad boy. But I would like to point out yet again, she says it's so 1990s, but... They did this in the 50s. I, I know, but I'm just saying, like, all these things really fit with the 90s when it was put out. I don't know. I just, I always, like, remember people tying, like, I don't know. I'm probably overgeneralizing Korean. I know. You haven't like, said anything overly like, general at all. <laughs> There'd be like a 15 year old girl and her like 20 year old boyfriend and her parents didn't want them to be together. So they like killed their parents and went and did satanic rituals. I don't know. I'd see that in the news. Like, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So that it was, was like a 90s from the thing. headlines, is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> it was a 90s thing. <laughs> It was a 90s thing. Murder. Right? It's a 90s thing. In, in 90s. <laughs> Murdering your Patricide. It's a 90s thing. Sorry, matricide, because they actually murdered her mother. What else you got? Uh, can we That's please it. make matricide, it's a 90s thing, the subtitle <laughs> of this episode or description? Matricide. <laughs> From a movie set in like 1950s. In the 50s. <laughs> You're done complaining? <laughs> no, my God, she's never done complaining. <laughs> Mike, let's go to you. Let's. I know you got stuff to talk about. I mean, like, it's what is there to say? Um, I I understand. I do understand most of X's grievances. Do not get me wrong. Again, like, I think the whole point is that they're on a sliding scale of being obnoxious. <laughs> than homicidally insane but you know you kind of like and maybe because i saw it when i was like a little bit younger than them and i kind of like maybe not felt that way not like murderous or anything not was it in the ni- was it in the 90s it was in the 90s yes yeah exactly <laughs> and <laughs> murder it's a 90s thing again um, <laughs> but like i you know i kind of like and especially when i watched it like years down the road, I was like, they're even more obnoxious than I remember, but I was like, I think I was too. (laughs) So I feel like, because not that I can relate, I didn't like want to murder anybody, but you know, they kind of had that like, you know, especially like Pauline kind of like a bit of a loner before Juliet showed up and just like listened to her music and lived in her head and created little worlds and read books and, you know, was a bit sour. And I was like, maybe that was me. I feel like that was probably me for most of my teen years. (laughs) I'm not going to lie. That's probably why I hate it, because that's what I was like, too. Yes. I I I embrace it. I embrace it. And then I just reflect on how, like, I never want to raise a teenager because they're so goddamn moody. (laughs) I mean, you should have realized that long before watching this movie. (laughs) (laughs) Heavenly Creatures made me realize I didn't want to raise a teenager. (laughs) What? I said heavenly creatures made me realize I didn't want to raise a teenager. <laughs> it really brought it home. Yeah. All that running, it just really My God. Hit her. My cats run around the house and I'm like, what are you doing? I don't know. I love that everything <laughs> Please stop. that they did and everything in the movie was like kind of cranked up to eleven because yeah. they were so like fucking just passionate. And like feverish about everything. And I just, I really liked that. And maybe because I saw it when I was young and I felt cranked up to 11 about everything, like there were no, you know, sort of like mundane emotions. It went from I wanna die to I wanna fucking kill you. You know what I mean? Like there's no in between. You're a fucking teenager. I thought when I was watching it, like he did a good job and the actresses did a good job and kind of, like you said, portraying those extremes where there's like no middle like even the way it's filmed and it's edited and everything like that like you said it's like very feverish so not only are we getting all this fantastical stuff but just like the pacing and everything of it is like very moody and it's very like there's no just calm it's always extreme emotion and they're always like 
scream well like you said running and screaming and crying and like desperately like i'm gonna say this it sounds weird moistly clutching at each other because they're full of tears and you know <laughs> moistly clutching there we go that's another uh another one for the books but you know what i mean like it, it, everything is like like when they're canonizing the singers like i that's another scene that i really really enjoyed because i know you're like oh my god like it's fucking opera singers and they're like an orson wells like what the fuck but like that whole scene to me just like again underlined the way that like art and artists were like so internalized by them and became such a part of their character and was like so essential that they were like literally sainting them and like performing rituals and ceremonies out in the woods and it's almost like witchy <laughs> yeah I just, you know, it's, I, I, I really enjoy it. I thought that there were all sorts of little touches that, you know, and again, maybe like if that like kind of feverish um, affect, if you will, is not your thing, you might not um, appreciate it. But I was always a big fan of like emotions cranked up to 11. So maybe that's why I like this movie so much. Emotions cranked up to 11 gives me like really bad anxieties. So oh, see, well, there we go. I this is, this is our this. fundamental issue right here. <laughs> I love it and you hate it. Like that's I literally like hate listening to people that like have raised voices that it's like really chaotic. I hate that. So maybe that's why cuz they're like running around and yelling and I'm just like, "Uh, oh, calm down." You're now tuned into the calm It's Lace podcast therapy session. Are you listening to Kids Bop Exilia? Calm down. <laughs> Kids Bop. No. <laughs> And it's really interesting that you talk about fever because this actually reminds me of a movie. When I was growing up, I like only had two channels because we didn't have cable. And so we had like the rabbit ears and we only got ATV and CBC. And it's not, it reminds me of a movie that I would watch on like a Sunday night when I have a fever and there's nothing else on. So you're kind of like drifting in and out of sleep and waking up to these random That's scenes actually... and then you're like burning up hot. That's how I feel. That sounds amazing. <laughs> no, and this is actually <laughs> re- this is really bizarre because I have as a point that I wanted to bring up, and I did not talk to Zilly before this. That when I watched it, I really got the feeling that. I was like, this is totally a movie I would, like, turn on, like, Bravo in the 90s or, like, Showcase, and it would be playing at, like, 10 o'clock at night and I or, like, 3 in the morning, and you're just kind of like, what is this? Like, oh that's how God, I saw it, you guys. Like, that's yeah, literally yeah. how I like, saw it. The, yeah. there's, there's girls kissing. We can't play this in the daytime. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind the murder. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's murder on TV know, all the time. <laughs> I will say this, because, you know, uh, we did have the conversation in the Closet Monster episode where we, you know, we were exhilarated, defended, you know, very well about why we picked it as a horror movie. And while I watched it, like, as it was going, I'm like, I'm like, Mike is totally... There's a murder. Yeah, but what I was going to say is, like, I'm as I'm watching it, I'm just like, fucking Mike, this is not anything nowhere near anything we should review but like as it built as it built up (laughs) and then like even with the last the third and final act of the murder yeah i was just like man like yeah well the first scene is literally them yeah but i didn't like as the build-up went i was like i just i don't see this as like anything close to like even a thriller but like yeah the murder and stuff i I was like, I was all, I was into it. I was loving it. And it think about it, all the all the fantasy it. scenes were filled with, like, treachery and murder. Yeah, well, and that's why I said, like, I got so much comedy horror Peter Jackson feels. Yeah. Like, like, they're stabbing each other with swords. Slicing each other in half. <laughs> Maybe that's why, I'm not, like, really a big fantasy person. Maybe that's also why. Maybe. I didn't really like but it. But probably more about the running. I mean, I hated the running, as you guys already know. Yes, never run unless you're being chased. <laughs> Exactly. That's the way I love my life. Or you're going to miss your bus. Or you're going to miss your bus, yes. I'm just confused at how you review horror movies when, like, 90% of all runtime on a horror movie is just people running. You like it because that has a purpose. It's not just like this whimsical running. <laughs> so it's whimsical <laughs> running to be precise. 
They're running from people. This is the uh, <laughs> heavenly creature, and then in brackets, the the running episode. <laughs> um, the next time that X picks a movie, I'm literally gonna get out my stopwatch on my phone <laughs> and time every second okay. that someone spends running in that movie, and that's it's gonna be we're okay. gonna have an issue. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just like such useless running <laughs> and they were yelling no, you're not no, i just hated like, it <laughs> the more they you, weren't like the oh, more you the try to explain it after me. the less sense it makes that you have an issue with it so i'm just saying like it's like quicksand you're just like struggling and the quicksand is just like sucking you in that is just my opinion <laughs> i just feel bad for you guys the listeners you're just like what the <laughs> fuck am i listening to can I tell you, I was just looking up what the genre was, and I found top voted tags. I don't even know what website it's from, because okay. it just came up on Google. Sure. Dark, intense, disturbing, psychological, memorable characters, unsettling, authentic acting, unique, suspenseful, and emotional. Interesting. Very interesting. I admit, I, like I said before, I questioned Mike, but as it went, I'm like, fuck, this is a good pick. I mean, it's it's more of a, a fitting pick than say Claza Monster. I'm just throwing that out there. Not and I, you know, I did not have a problem with Claza Monster. I'm just saying for the same uh-huh. reasons that you would consider uh-huh. Closet Monster appropriate, you would consider Heavenly Creatures. I never said that it wasn't horror. That was wrong. That Don't was me. come after my pick, Jesus. <laughs> no, but I'm not coming after your pick. I'm just saying that, like you know, it's. There are similarities in terms of the kind of like... um, How horror are they? Yeah. In the like tropes that they use that we kind of pick up on. Also, can we talk about how... Because I think it's the most horrific part in the movie. Obviously, the murder is actually like the way that it's filmed. It's really, really disturbing. I really like the way that he shot it. Just kind of like those... I don't want to call them quick edits, but we got like all the different angles. Because we never really see we see like one shot of her face bloody yeah that's all we really see we just kind of see and it's that, an like, awful shot like in terms yeah. of it's oh, it just gives you chills <laughs> yeah and like all you really see is just like the emotion on the girls and just like that like raw anger i i really liked how it was shot if you take anything from this rowan loved how it was shot rowan loved that um brick in a sock a stocking, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Get him, get him. Although, like, the mom picked up the purse. I know, when you and I was like, like isn't this you... super heavy? <laughs> yeah, why, why does this <laughs> Like, you lay it on the table and it's just, like, thunk. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, that's normal. Oh, that's a that's a really old sandwich that is, ter- that is petrified <laughs> that I'm carrying around because I keep forgetting to throw it out. Don't worry about it. And what was that, like, random scene? Like, the dad with the sandwich, and he's like, oh, what smells? And then she's like... Oh, it's that sandwich I made for you. And he just puts it back, but it's like this... Oh, yeah, in his pocket. It's like this weird comedy scene that just seems so out of place. And it's just like, it's never really, like, brought up again, like... (laughs) I'll bet you there's all sorts of, like, little um, bits that were snipped out for, like, runtime. I bet you 10 bucks there's, like, 10 minutes worth of stuff that was cut out. Probably. uh, We we watch this, because it is available on YouTube for free, and the runtime on YouTube was... 148. 148. So I think we watched the director's cut because I looked it up and the normal cut is like 138. Oh, okay. So I think it must have been the director's cut, but I've never seen the normal one. So I don't know what would have been edited in or whatnot. I feel like, especially like older movies like i feel like usually the de- like deleted stuff isn't even that amazing it was probably just like fat they thought they could trim um also it, it, though it's probably just scenes of running well probably. i mean clearly it was just running Maybe and that's, screaming that's why he doesn't get it because he didn't see an extra 18 minutes oh. of it or eight, 10 minutes <laughs> extra 10 minutes <laughs> Honestly, I would pay money to force you to have to sit down and watch a longer version of this movie with, like, 20 extra minutes of running. I would love it. I, honestly, if you got hooked up to that, like, a clockwork orange thing that, like, (laughs) pulled your your eyes eyes open. open. (laughs) And I'd just sit there with, like, the eye drops going, like, watch watch these bitches running. Watch them. (laughs) I would die. Like, I was just like, oh, my God. This is the most boring movie ever. Scene of my life. And like you know that Juliet <laughs> is one of the world's most popular mystery authors, right? No. <laughs> like in real life. Yeah, no. What's her name? 
you know Anne Perry, the mystery. Oh, yeah. Guy. Yeah, that's Juliet. Like, in real life. In real life. If you Google Anne Perry, there's a whole section on her Wikipedia about how she murdered her friend's mother and they went to jail and then had to split and apart. And she's and... like, hey, I'm this, like, mystery author now. Well, I mean, clearly she changed her name and tried to get away from it. But... <laughs> Yeah. No, I, I know who she is basically from working. Well, yeah, I was going to say, store, I mean, you, but... you were a bookseller. You've, you've definitely reshelved hundreds of her yes. books. <laughs> I've never, yeah, I've just never read her. I don't, I've never read a mystery book since like childhood. Too much running. <laughs> <laughs> Not, I hate watching running. Now wait till I tell you about reading about it. <laughs> this is terrible. I would love to see, like, how do, how can you even describe running for more than like two sentences? Like, I want to know what you <laughs> you think is oh, no. the content of these books <laughs> the 20 page scene of her running man like it's just <laughs> <laughs> she put her left foot out. <laughs> in and and she then... put her left foot out. <laughs> dear lord anything else to talk about mike no, i feel like i know i <laughs> exilia's totally derailed this oh, episode how I'm just saying my review. <laughs> Listeners, don't don't message us. Find Exilia's <laughs> personal accounts and braid her. Whatever. I don't care. All right. Well, let's get to the final question. Is it scary if you have a fear of running? I mean... I mean, I found... It's not, it's that, not I found in that, a fear, but... No, it's more of a an aversion. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to say no, it's not scary whatsoever, but uh, don't let that deter you. No, well, I mean, no, it's not scary. The, the, the murder scene is very well done and frightening, but like, it's only scary if you are afraid of two girls falling in love with each other and then kind of slipping into psychosis. And those weird clay things. No, it's not scary. <laughs> you really think about that. All right, so are we comfortable getting in the rating? Yes. All right. Yes, queen. So if you are a new listener, we'll just explain that uh, the rating system. So we give it a nay, okay, yay, or slay. And uh, if you are new to listening, uh, we'll just give you a heads up that usually Exilia gives them pretty bad ratings. <sighs> She is I'm the contrarian. Being, I mean, she I'm didn't listen to opera or classical when she was younger, so she's very uncultured. Yes, that's very me. Uncultured swine. That's true. So let's start with Mike. Let's start on a positive note. What do you rate this? You know, personally, I mean, it's not a perfect movie, and I understand that. I would give it a slay. I'm not going to. Because I know that my fiery feelings of passion for it are just a very personal thing. But I will give it an absolute yay. I think it's an excellent movie. Is it a masterpiece? Not really. It was still, you know, kind of like Peter Jackson on the rise. He was. I feel like he was still cutting his teeth. But I thought there was so much commendable shit about it. And I thought that it was very beautifully acted and shot and um written so yay bordering on slay okay i'll go next uh i really enjoyed this more than i thought i was gonna enjoy it i thought the story was interesting all the things i said before i loved all the fantastical and i love your early peter jackson anyway saying that i'm gonna give it an okay it's definitely is that because you fell asleep numerous times i almost did fall asleep almost times. almost <laughs> almost it just it was just okay for me like i liked it it's i just probably have far more Peter Jackson films that I put above this, I think, than having this somewhere up on the top. Uh, I mean, it's definitely, I think, if you need a movie to watch, like, watch it at least once. Like, I think it is a good film, but I don't know if it's something I'm going to necessarily watch again. But it, like I said at the beginning of the episode, it kind of opened up the door for me to be like, hey... I'd like to watch more films like this. So it gets that uh, that plus from me. Exilia. Well, I'm going to give this a nay. <laughs> Surprise. If you are looking to watch a movie and you don't know what to watch, watch something else. <laughs> I just said that because I know Mike would be really upset. <laughs> I'm fuming. Fuming. <laughs> Yeah, it just reminds me of like, um, I don't know what it was. It reminded me of like a movie that I would be at my grandparents' house, minus like, 
<laughs> Minus like the lesbian relationship, but and they oh, yeah, would be, wa- be like <laughs> nine year old be- ex sitting down with her grandparents yeah. <laughs> watching two girls naked in a tub. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and I would be at their house, and they would be making me watch something on like BBC or something. But I mean, like that. it is a period piece, right? Yeah, and then I'm like, oh my god, when the fuck is this gonna be over? <laughs> That's basically my <laughs> my rating. I respect that you love this movie. <laughs> I do. That's okay. You don't have to patronize me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the budget game. We know how this works. Exilia and Mike guess the budget and what it made, and uh, the winner gets the pride of knowing that they're pretty smart. How much do you think this film costs to make? Mike can go first. Three million dollars. Oh, three milli for Mike. I know it was indie. Obviously, this is an independent movie. One point nine million dollars. Exilia's going with the one point nine. I'm assuming the one million to make the movie the nine hundred thousands just for running scene. It was the running budget. It was like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the train. <laughs> So, Mike is going to take this one. It was $5 million. X, you're off your game. I'm just saying. It was those clay figures. It was those clay figures. So, how much do you think it made? Exilia. Well, I had never heard of this movie before. That doesn't really... That's not really saying much, I guess. But, um... Maybe, like, three million. Three million. Mike, what do you think? I don't know. One or two... 1.5, 1.5, there we go. <laughs> 1.5 from Mike, oh my god. Exilia's gonna take this one. Ooh. So it made 5.4 million. Oh. Well, I'm glad they made their money back. So they made their money back with a little extra. That's always a good thing. And I mean, this is still pretty indie Peter Jackson. So this wasn't, you know, Lord of the Rings money. Yeah, it was, and it was pre frightening. Obviously. Uh, so... We're going to get into uh, recommending some LGBTQ plus podcasts. Exilia promised last episode that she would uh, kind of give a list and some shout outs to other great horror film podcasts. And we wanted to make sure we got that to you guys. So Exilia, I'm going to give you the floor. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so, well, you have one as well. Yeah, you, you can say them. Okay, that one first. Uh, so I did have one just because uh, it's one that I personally listen to every episode, and that's uh, every horror movie on Netflix is what it's uh, called. And I wouldn't say they necessarily market themselves as an LGBTQ plus uh, podcast, but I do know that a lot of the cast members do identify as that, and they're super funny to listen to. Uh, I think if you like us. Uh, so you definitely like them. Um, they talk about movies very, I, I say very dry academically, but like funny. They are very interesting and they're very good personalities. So that's my recommendation. Um, I have a couple that we've come across that either we follow or they follow us and vice versa. Um, so Copulators Die First is one of the podcasts. I believe they're from the Midwest. And it's a very, like, conversational podcast. Um, Like, for instance, I was listening to an episode today and they were talking about just, like, their mental health. And, like, one of them was changing medications. And they were talking about stuff like that. So it was, like, personal stuff. Um, The other, or next one is Queer Horror Cult. They do kind of really cool, like, thematic episodes. So it'll be, like... A theme and they'll like t- bring in four different movies into that theme. I think they had one about gentrification or where they talked about gentrification. I know they talked about Candyman in that one. Um, they have one about like colonialism. They have one about like virality, like horror movies in rural areas. Um, and they also love cats and they were talking on their podcast about how when they found out that that like tiger or lion or whatever got like COVID and how they were really upset because they 
were basically they when they thought oh if I get COVID like I'm more concerned about giving it to people because like I'll be fine probably and then they found out that they could possibly give it to their cats and they were both very upset and I totally identify that with that because I went through the exact same emotions um (laughs) the next one is spilling guts podcast so they do ones that are like original versus remake they also have one that's like bad it's called badass bitches top five uh final girls so they do like thematic ones as well and i think one's from northern ireland and the other one's from the uk somewhere um and then the final one is fry gay the 13th and um i only recently found out about them but they did an episode where they talked to the boulet brothers which i'm like really late on this game i guess but i found out last night (laughs) that there's like a rupaul drag show but it's for horror it's like horror drag and it's on out tv and so anyways it's called like boulet brothers and there's a lot of had a conversation yeah there are and like on rupaul's drag race they'd have had horror queens yeah before yeah so but yeah this is all like all horror so i thought that was really cool yeah so uh you know if you listen to us maybe give some of them a listen and hopefully you'd enjoy their content too uh so we do have to get into uh some shameless promotion of our stuff uh we'll start off with uh if you're ever so kind and you like what you hear uh give us a star rating and hopefully a text rating on apple uh because it helps bump us up for people to find us and as well we will read your comments on the show don't drag me in the comments i'm actually a nice person yeah unless you <laughs> really life. like running oh my god stop talking about the red <laughs> the next thing is spotify uh we have our spotify playlist i'm gonna make sure exilia add some closet monster music on there i think i already did that. oh it might already be up on there uh you can find it it slays podcast horrific playlist uh, so yeah, give it a follow. We're always updating it. And we did, uh, find out today that the writer and director of Claws and Monster listened. Yeah. To sh- our episode. Shout out to Stephen Dunn. He wrote us and, uh, said that he enjoyed the episode. Hopefully he wasn't too offended when I talked about Ryerson. <laughs> it, it was less of a, like, you know, uh, and more of like, haha, I go to York and it's like a rivalry kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he like got that, but that's okay. <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty cool, and and we kind of extended him an offer that we said he should come on the uh, podcast. So we'll try to set something up. Uh, make sure to follow us on all our social media. It's Lay's podcast on Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram, Twitter, and last but not least. If you're looking for a way to support the show, you can go to www.patreon.com slash podcast. We have a bunch of different tiers there, different levels, and you can get cool stuff from shoutouts to cards to t-shirts. And uh, hopefully soon we'll have an announcement and we'll get some t-shirts in people's hands. Because I think we're going to do a little small print of t-shirts and last but not least we have to announce the final pride month pick they say the best goes last so this was my pick oh my god the something goes last i had to do it we wanted to pick this last year but then we felt a lot of people ended up doing it so we said ah we'll wait till next year uh and that is to me the the holy grail of gay cinema (laughs) gay horror cinema uh it's dubbed as the gayest horror movie of all time uh by almost 80 million publications um and that is a nightmare on elm street 2 i'm so excited freddy's boyfriend is the subtitle yeah (laughs) um it's not freddy's revenge that was just the production title it's nightmare on elm street 2 freddy's boyfriend Very excited. I know Mike is very excited to talk about Oh my god, yes. I'm like raring to go already. Exilia is on the fence, maybe. Why are you? I don't know. (laughs) I don't know Exilia's feeling. I don't know. Why do you do this? I don't know her feelings on this one. We'll find out. I haven't seen it for like since I was 16. But I'm very excited. And I will say if you're going to watch that uh, in preparation 
for our episode. I was saying it before we started recording. We're also going to quickly talk about the new documentary that came on Shudder. Uh, about this film. I can't remember the, the, the main title. The subtitle is like My Nightmare on Elm Street. I believe the title is Scream Queen. Yes, Scream Queen. That's what it is. I'm really, I, I might even watch some tonight. I'm like super excited. I've been waiting for that documentary forever. And, yeah, it's been uh, on my radar for a very long time. So I think that is everything. We hope you tune in for the next episode where we conclude our Pride Month celebration. You know, unfortunately, it's been a little tamed down with uh, COVID as well as all the... Uh, police brutality and you know the necessary protests and everything like that uh we've kind of had the switch focus from pride month to uh looking at that intersectionality and realizing there's other people that are part of pride month that need our help right now yeah fight the good fight and uh we'll see you at the end of the month as always i am rowan bye it's the person you love to hate exilia and I'm going to be running just to piss her off, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Thank you.